Hey guys, welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. Today I'd like to bring you a high MMR cast game. High MMR game casted. And as follows the usual proceeding. Sorry, I was just trying to see where the Treasure Goblin was. I think it's on both sides? Yeah, it's on both sides. So as you can see, this is during the uh, the Diablo 3 event. This is before the, the release of the Monk. And on the blue team we have Kel'thas, Zeratul, Lili, Anumarek, and Tyrande. On the red team we have Valor, Johanna, Marfuri, Nazebo, Jaina. Nothing too strange in the picks there. I suppose the strangest pick is probably the uh, Lili and Tyrande. They're both kind of subpar supports. If you look at the likes of Malfurion and Uther, they're generally considered to be better than both of those two. But the CC in Tyrande and the kind of burst healing that Lili has, which is quite significant, as well as the uh, the CC removal, which you can gain, which of course the, uh, the red team has a lot of CC, can be quite effective when comboed together. So it looks like Nubrak's going to be looking to get a little poke on Jaina in the early game, which is understandable. Nubrak getting a head on HP is really, really useful. Tyrande knows Johanna is there, so there's going to be no surprises there. A little blind just to kind of start things out but it's going to be a, a good condemn on the wave clear from Johanna and this is going to be a very very difficult lane for Tyrande to really do anything on her own with the unstoppable it means you can't get a stun off uh, the Johanna's going to have incredibly good wave clear coupled with the Valor or anyone else in the team really that has good wave clear it'll really be able to bully Tyrande out of lane as a result Tyrande's going to have to go with someone at all times now Jane is going to have a surprisingly good time down here uh, of course, once Zeratul's around and about, it's going to be incredibly difficult for anyone to do anything. And a good stun could secure a kill here. It's a very good stun. It's just not enough. Uh, I'm of the firm belief that, you, you, that um, getting an enemy to use a healing fountain at level 1 is much more useful than getting a kill. So I actually quite like that play. I actually quite like leaving her at 1-2 HP. And if she tries to come out and really tries to punish it and then kill her, that puts her healing fountain on cooldown. And you get the experience for it as well, which is incredibly useful. Looks like Johanna and Mafia are going to be pushing in here. Zeratul gets caught out there. Doesn't die. Uh, better eyes on the Valor. Could have caught, could have uh, cost Zeratul his life there, but nothing too massive. Anubarak again just going to be kind of duking out with Jaina here. Now it's going to be difficult for the Jaina because she wants to clear the waves and Anubarak all he has to do is kind of stay out of the wave and not get hit by anything too. Meanwhile Jaina's getting picked off. Good stun there and she's going to go down. Valor needs to be careful here but so does the Kel'thas. Malfurion's coming in for the heals. Zerus who could re-engage if a stun lands. He's going to look for it. The CC's too good and there goes Turand. The Malfurion coming in there and just providing the kind of not bursty but bursty heals on Valor. Uh, was just enough to mean that she could stick in the fight for too long and the Zeratul and the uh, Turan couldn't quite organise a re-engage together but sorry, Zeratul swings right down onto the bottom lane and tries to get a gank on Jaina doesn't quite work out but it's going to be able to do uh, to, to deny Jaina some uh, some gems and get some damage off on her and just let New New Break settle Zeratul meanwhile is going to go back up to mid lane and look to just clear the wave I imagine as you can imagine, this map is really action-packed because it's so small. Characters that are roaming can just roam from lane to lane incredibly quickly. And that's why we're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of action, a lot of engagements happening really, really early on. Uh, meanwhile, Kael Thass is going to just come and try and stabilize the lane. And Zerato is going to look to get some free damage off on the Valor. Does so, Valor needs to be very careful here. Oh, uh, so does the Zerato now. And that's the power of Tumble. Never underestimate the use of Tumble. Very, very good from the Valor, actually. Delaying that Tumble well enough and almost costing Zerato to stay in a second too long. Costing him his life and Valor, of course, with the Malfurion. Backing him up can get on full health very, very quickly. Looks like Johanna's going to get caught out here, but he shouldn't die. And it's a good stun lands. A good stun does land, and that's going to be the end of Johanna. That's just uh, the power of having that CC. Looks like Jane is looking to kill the Zeratul. Doesn't want to get too too happy about it. Otherwise, uh, Zeratul could turn with the rest of the team, and that will be a dead Jaina, particularly with a Tyrand stun. So as you can see, there hasn't been that many kills this in this part of the game so far. People have done very well to stay alive, but the kills that have been secured have been secured by Tyrand's stun. So me saying that, she, that she's not a very good... I wouldn't say not a very good pick. She's an unorthodox pick. Very good on this map because she can roam very quickly between lanes. And if you can roam into a lane, land a stun, and then secure a kill, that's so, so unbelievably useful. To the point of which it's probably game-winning. So the couple of ganks that have happened so far are very good. And Nurek needs to be careful. He's over extended here. He's beyond the halfway point. Valor's too in, too interested in turning in coins and he has shoved the lane up far enough to give him enough time to get back. Meanwhile, in mid lane, no one should die here. There's no real hard CC to kind of deal with, with locking them down. Uh, so they can't really secure a kill in the early game too, too well. But yeah, it's just going to be difficult. Meanwhile, Zeratul going to get some free damage off on the Valor. Tumble is up, I believe. Doesn't need it in the end. There it is. Avoids, avoids the flame strike and the stun. That was a very good tumble. This Valor's had some had some pretty clutch tumbles so far. I will look at bottom lane in just a second. See what's going on down there. Jaina's getting poked a little bit too hard. She's going to be able to get away though. And Nubrak's kind of using... Oh, and we're back in the fight up here. Kel'thas looking to get a good position. Of course, remember, Kel'thas's power spike doesn't really come until level 13, 16, maybe level 10. And at that point... Oh, he was lucky to get away without getting rooted there. Oh, the good stun. Oh, and that's going to be a dead Jaina. 
Uh, yeah. Oh, good shield, good shield. So he probably wouldn't have died anyway, but if they had uh, someone who's roaming, he could definitely roam and grab a quick kill there. But unfortunately, they don't. So it looks like Zeratul is going to be trying to get some experience. Good blink away, Lily coming in to take over the job. Mid lane, there isn't that much going on. Roots trying to come down, flame strikes. Malfurion versus Kael'thas is never really going to go Malfurion's way. Unless he has Tranquility up and the Kael'thas is awful. Which it doesn't like our Kael'thas is in this game. So Nazebo is going to be up the top. The Red Sea team going to be down in mid lane. Just kind of scrambling for experience. This is what this map can really kind of reduce down into. Just a mad scramble for turn-in points. As you can see, they're pretty even on the turn-in. And uh, they're pretty even for map position right now. The red team are pushing forward in top, in, in top lane. And the blue team are pushing forward in bottom lane. Looks like the red team have just managed to secure just beyond the halfway point. And it's a good stun. Good little CC there from the team up there. Going to get the kill on, uh, on the Zevo. Zeratul needs to be careful. He's probably going to go down. There's not much he can do about it. And Kel'Thas needs to be careful. Don't think she's got Condemn up. If she gets Condemn up, he's probably going to die. There's Condemn. It's a good Condemn. One more spell will do it. Yeah, there he goes. Code of Cold there just to finish it off. So that was not worth it for the blue team. The red team just had like the health and mana on them for like half a second and managed to secure that map advantage. And when the red team tried to... Oh, that's a good stun. That's a very good stun. Unfortunately, it's just not enough to get the kill on Valor. And the red teams uh, are going to be able to secure the objective and thus they're going to secure the spiders pushing the lane for now. So what's happened so far is it's just kind of been a... I wouldn't say random at all. I would say it's the it's the red team playing the the very long game. They're securing the high HP, high mana positions, so that when it really comes down to it, when securing map position is really important, they're going to grab it. Zeratul's B needs to be very careful. He might get caught out. A little bit of a team fight going on here. This is not good for the blue team to fight here. Not when they have spiders pushing the front door. They need to pull back and pull back right now. Kael'thas is going to swing up to top lane to try and deal with it. And Nubrak needs to be careful. Zeratul manages to sneak through all that without getting taken out of stealth and manages to get some free damage on the Valor. He is going to be able to blink away. He shouldn't be in too much trouble here. Oh my god, he walks the wrong way and dies for it. That wasn't the best from the Zeratul there. Meanwhile, the Roots are going to come down on the new rack. Keldas is still at top lane. Keldas really needs to come down here and try and help this right now. Bad stun. Is it going to be able to hit anything? new rack running for his life. If he doesn't have Burrow charge up, this is going to suck. He does have it up and he's fine for now. Lili forcing to go back to defend him. And then as a result, both Tyrand and Lili have low mana. Good zombie wall there. It's going to take Lili out of the fight for now. Another good zombie. Oh, there goes Lili as well. Good good, uh, good blizzards and good zombie walls to really to kind of secure that kill. And now the red team have level 10 and they have spiders. So the, the blue team are really going to have trouble engaging any situation down here. Good condemn. It's going to get... um. It's going to force Kel'Thas. There's the water mental. Kel'Thas is really out of position here. The red team turns and look at him. He's probably going to die. He has loads of chill on him. Zeratul is going to come in, going to try and pick off the Jaina. Does well, blinks away. So now it is still not over for the Zeratul. He is under his fort, but there is so much damage coming in on him. And he's not going to be able to make it. Anubarak trying to get some value out of this. Not doing an amazing job. And Tyrann goes down as well. Blue team trying desperately to get value out of this. And just not allowing it to happen. When they got level 10s there. They really wanted to, to sweep in. And get, a, and get a few kills. And they just couldn't manage it. And in the midst of all this. Valor has been able just to push bottom lane. And get to the fort. And mid lane fort fell in that crazy team fight stuff that happened. Lily almost caught up by Zombie Wall again. And uh, Keldas went up top to kind of help top lane secure, which he did incredibly well, to be fair to him. But it cost his team so much experience. They're now two levels down. Um, well, just under two levels down. And the red team just kind of are free to do whatever they want on the map for the while. And they're doing the correct play, which is grab mercenary camps and further press your advantage. While this doesn't give you much XP, it gives you um, fort positioning. This means that their mid, their mid keep is going to be pressured. And at some point, the blue team are going to have to come and defend this. And in the meantime, the red team can kind of do whatever they want. It means that they, they push the client of Zero, so needs to be careful here. His hut is right below the whole team. They have seen him. Good blink away is gonna that's gonna uh, save him for a little while, but he just needs to be careful here. He he can't really be um be engaging on someone unless they are massively on their own. Twenty one coins in the Johanna gonna be able to turn it without too much trouble, I imagine. Even if Zeratul gets the interrupt here, not gonna be able to do much with it. And the oh, there goes to Rand. Sorry, I wasn't even expecting that. Just getting picked out by the uh and caught and forcing both Kelpass and her own ult. Obviously, her own ult will be coming up soon after she's alive again. But Lily getting caught out as well. And there goes Lily. When with the uh, the Valor and the Jaina were just grabbing the mercenary camp. Zeratul needs to be careful. Valor's chasing him for everything. Gonna take some damage here from everyone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Run, run, keep running, keep running. Don't oh god, Kel'Thas has been spotted. Kel'Thas and a new rack have been spotted. Kel'Thas probably gonna die here. There's not much they can do about it. Just chasing the kills. The red team just can do whatever they want. They have this map presence and they're going around as five and they can really 
that there's no there's no way that the blue team can really counter this. Mafion has been left alone. A good route is going to mean that he survives for now. Meanwhile, Valor and the Zebo are just going to be shoving bottom lane with the Siege Giants. Get up to the keep, right? Let's go back and do whatever we want. The blue team somehow managed to get Web Weavers out of this, but they really aren't going to be able to do that much. They might be able to bash down a gate or two, maybe push them closer, lessen the experience deficit a little bit, but it's by no means going to be game changing. So let's have a look after that's, after that's really been cleaned up and see the damage. Still no cannon towers have been taken down by the blue team. The red team are still at full defenses. The only thing they have got is top cannon towers are kind of damaged and have no ammo. Meanwhile, the blue team are just kind of scrambling to defend and the red team are setting up for an engage. Good blink away. Excuse me, does force Jaina's Blizzard, which means that the red team aren't going to be able to engage fully for a few seconds. Good multi-shot there is going to catch him out. Jaina looking for the kill. He shouldn't be able to get it. Meanwhile, on the other side of the team fight... Johanna's just sitting in the front lines, doing really good Johanna plays here. Nazebo's being a little bit aggressive, but there's nothing against that. And on the back of this, they secure the objective once more. I'm surprised they had that many coins, in all honesty. But uh, a, a little pro tip, if, you are, if you're playing this map and you have the advantage, if you have the spiders pressing, make sure you collect all the, all the gems. A lot of gems will just be falling from the, uh, from the opposing team's uh, ranged minions. And if you grab them, you can really find yourself with like 50, 60 coins after a, uh, after, after a big push. And if you grab them all, that means you can secure another big push. And then it happens again. The red team are going to look to get boss, which doesn't spawn. Are they going to camp this until the last one dies and then pick it up? That sounds like a good idea. However, it does mean that the blue team could do have time to just kind of sort this out. Zeratul's miles away from it, though. So they are going to be able to get at least a little bit of an advantage. And obviously, uh, Jane will be able to grab before. And it looks like they are just going to be able to get this. Now... The, uh, the blue team know they're doing this. The blue team ha must know they're doing this. It's a, it's a case of whether they can get there. A, before he would have scouted it. But they, they, no, they can't really stop them doing it. They might have been able to stop them doing it if they could get there before they took it. But as a result, uh, Anubarak might get caught out here. Forces the Barrow Charge away. Zeratul's not with this team, so they really can't force anything. Good stun. Follow up with that. That's, that's a very good boys prison. Their health are somehow staying alive through all this. Johanna's getting Anubarak very, very low, and, and then here comes the damage. That was when their main damage dealers were CC'd. Good zombie war is going to be the end of Anubarak, and that uh, Gargantuan just going to be able to do whatever the hell he wants, really. And with the boss backing out, there's not much the blue team can do to defend this for now. They're going to have to get the keep coming in to try and defend this. Good stun there, but Anzibo is just not in the right position to die. Zeratul's hungry for his blood. I can't even know what happened there. Did he wormhole back away? And the keep is just going to die here. There's not much they can do about it. Especially with Anubarak dead. They can't engage. And the red team knows this. And they're just going to sit under their, their giant. And really do whatever the hell they want for the, for the next few levels. Johanna can push forward and try and get like a condemn like that. Needs to be careful though. If she gets bursted down a little bit too much. She's going to die awfully, awfully quick. It's a good stun. But unfortunately they still can't deal with this boss. The ice block there from the zebra isn't going to be that good. It's going to force Tranquility out. Which does come up with a stun. And when, when Cocoon comes down, which means my audio is broken, Kael'thas getting caught out with a few good abilities, and just gets wrecked. Now the, now the Webcoon is going to come out, and that means that Malfune is now back in the fight, but the red team don't really need to do anything. Looks like Lily's going to get caught out here. Zeratul might get caught out as well if he's not careful. Zeratul's getting so low, so quickly, and now goes that means the three of them are down already. A new rack falls as well, and Turan's is out of position. That's got to be game. Now, I know this is unlike me to call game, but at 13 minutes, you're level 16, they're level 13, and there you have one of them to defend against? This is game, right? There's no way they can they can, they can can lose this. Unless Kael'thas spawns somehow manages to secure a money flame strike, this is game. So what happened there? I think the red team just outmaneuvered them. The blue team didn't secure the picks when they needed to secure the picks, and they didn't really just do enough. They kind of let the red team do whatever they want. When it, when it really mattered, which was kind of level 6 onward, the red team secured their, their position and just pushed forward and managed to get a couple of kills. They, they, every time they, they went for it, they managed to get one or two kills. They got what I like to refer to as value, which is a one-for-one one at the very, very minimum. But like two-for-one in engagement. They get two kills and they and they give up one. That's that's value. They managed to get that every single engagement. And you grind it down and grind it down. Eventually you get map control. And on a map like this, map control is king. So they ended up winning. Anyway, this has been a cast. I have been Mr. G, and I will see you next time.